Okay, so um, should we start? Is, is it time? Yeah. Good. So, hello. Um, I think like uh, we, it's quite a small um, event. It's very good. We're all focused. So, um, some of you know me maybe already. Um, I'm Mario. Um, Mario Billing. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Berlin. Yeah. Uh, in Germany, uh, some people say there's Germany and there's Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and I'm um, from Vietnam at the moment. I'm coming from Vietnam. Um, we have a company there which is called MBM. Um, we started that company in 2009. And um, yeah, I would like to um, talk with you today about some experience that we have made. Um, also, like I have a bit of uh, a few points about outsourcing in general. Um, that's the topic here, outsourcing and uh, co-development in, in Asia. Um, when Dominic uh, uh, like uh, had the idea for this event, he, he told me like people will come from from Europe, from Switzerland, from different countries, and uh, um, they are interested in uh, connecting with the community. But of course, like also, uh, everyone needs to make a living, so connecting with other companies. And uh, yeah, I can talk about my experience. But uh, the idea is a bit like that. Um, I will share some. Um, something here but I hope like at the end we also have a discussion so um, like uh, I will try to leave uh, uh, enough space at the end uh, that we can talk because I know that uh, uh, there are more people here here uh, Chris yeah and others who also have uh, a lot of input on that subject already outside doing the talks uh, we always heard like about experiences and so on okay so let me uh, first uh, uh, start okay so that's of course a sorry I should say that maybe that's a picture of um, uh, Saigon, yeah, taken from very high uh, with a view over the river. Um, so District 1 is still called Saigon in Ho Chi Minh City, um, uh, but the whole city is called Ho Chi Minh City officially. Yeah? But if you have to do a lot, for example, with uh, uh, Vietnamese people who come back from the US and do business in Vietnam, uh, I don't like, it's like a synonym, Ho Chi Minh City and Saigon or HCM. Yeah. Also, when you're here in Phnom Penh, you often see PP. Yeah. So uh, we have all kinds of abbreviations um, um, that are common. Okay. Our company, MBM, make your ideas work. Yeah. Um, so um, similar to to Web Essentials, we also have the idea of spreading knowledge, of sharing knowledge, uh, because we also believe it will benefit uh, us. Um, we do uh, and work uh, with a lot of free and open source software that we use ourselves and uh, um, we also depend on a lot of improvements of others. Um, so it's a lot about ideas. Yeah? And uh, that's why we have this um, logo. Okay, so what we do, we started 2009 and I would like to tell you a bit about uh, uh, what we do in general. Of course, software development, um, but we also uh, organize events, for example, uh, Genome Gnome Asia 2009 was in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, some people who I see here at the event were there already. We met them first time there. And uh, that was a pretty big event, um, big sponsors. And uh, we had the um, president of the Gnome Foundation there. We had developers from Red Hat and all over the world. So there was a great kickoff. And we said, oh, cool, Like, let's start the company. We know a lot of people. We can connect. And uh, um, I think there's a real opportunity. Then uh, we also organized event. Uh, I wrote 2012. That's the goal, actually. That photo is from 2011. Um, by the way, that's my wife, Hong Fook. Yeah. Um, yeah. We work together in the company, and um, she also engages actively um, in uh, projects in the community a lot. For example, with uh, Libro Graphics, um, GIMP, yeah, um, um, yeah, things like that. And, Lily and a, a woman from the PC magazine. So um, yeah, it's a big uh, community. Here another event. Uh, ah yeah, that was also from Globe Asia 2009. Here, yeah, very big photo. Um, also people from China and so on. Okay, other things we do. Um, we also do trainings. For example, uh, uh, so spreading uh, uh, software and and like working with the local community. Yeah, finding uh, uh, like cases where people can actually uh, use uh, the development uh, uh, locally as well and it also helps us to find um, uh, local developers for example 
Yeah. So uh, we do that in schools. We do it with uh, teachers, and uh, we work together with uh, different organizations also from the development sector, like uh, the German Development Corporation, uh, USAID, Australian Aid, um, and others. Here we have another event that we did a photo from another event. Uh, a big focus of us is uh, uh, women in IT. Yeah, we have uh, 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 we had that discussion in the open source community. Yeah, there are no women in the uh, uh, right, and yeah, it's like some people really like treat the women so bad, so they leave right away. Yeah, so uh, actually, when I go around Asia, situation pretty good. Yeah, have you seen so many uh, um, female participants? Uh, at a conference like that in Europe, um, I think quite rare. Yeah? And uh, as Hong Fook, uh, um, my wife, was at events in, in, in the US and Canada and, and Europe, and she thought, oh, that's a really big topic. Yeah? And uh, so women in IT, and we are always uh, very happy to have uh, a lot of women and to, to focus on subjects and like uh, 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 to share experience. Yeah? For example, people in, um, in Beijing say, oh, we had uh, uh, experience a good experience here with, for example, starting groups uh, Linux for girls, yeah, things like that, and uh, uh, found some good developers. Okay, so now we come to the real uh, uh, um, focus of this uh, 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 talk here, which is um, outsourcing and co-development in Asia. Before I go into the detail, I would like uh, uh, make a few points here. Um, that uh, uh, concern free and open source software versus proprietary closed source software. There are a few key differences. Of course, you all know many, but these are here some that uh, I find relevant for this talk. In free and open source, the code, all the code is available online usually. GitHub, SourceForge, you all know it. Yeah? In closed source, it is not. And uh, for me, free and open source is not only about the code. Yeah? It's a lot about a, a development model. Yeah? We actually collaborate and work together um, uh, in one city, in one uh, uh, country, in a, in a region globally. Yeah? You put the code out there, immediately your project is a global project. Yeah? So uh, uh, people actually work in open source, they're already used to, to working globally. Yeah? Then it's not only one company, who's usually the owner, but like uh, code is out there and their developers or like in many cases also many companies uh, contribute. <coughs> and for us, there is a lot of documentation. People complain, oh, no documentation, yeah? But the documentation is often not in a, in a central place, yeah? It's in forums, yeah? Try, try to look online, like for some question you ever could have uh, of Ubuntu, yeah, somebody answered that question already. Yeah? You can you can find it. Um, it's on mailing lists. Yeah, it's uh, on I IRC channels, yeah? in forums. So you, you you can find it, but right, it's not like one document and then you go through it or you call support. So that's open source, closed source. Um, we uh, see uh, that documentation is also a, uh, a product often itself, yeah? So you, you want the documentation, you want all the uh, uh, information, uh, sometimes you need to pay. Um, and uh, uh, like for specific, like for developers, for example, uh, they might even have to sign NDA. Yeah. Okay, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm separating here open and close, but like of course, like lines are blurring, it doesn't mean that you never have to sign NDA with an open source project, yeah? But like you, you, uh, you understand my point. A vibrant um, free and open source project um, uh, uh, means they have a vibrant community. Yeah? And, and, and that's a great source of uh, uh, finding developers. Whereas, yeah, I mean, one big problem, for example, of Microsoft, uh, right? It is not a big problem that they have so bad software. Right? Many of their products are pretty good. But uh, uh, um, I think they have a uh, uh, difficulty um, with uh, uh, the community. They don't have a very active developers community. They are companies and so on, but look like uh, 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 Android. Right? They get so many developers, 
um, in, in a few years. Um, Microsoft really tries to sponsor recently community events and so on. We see the logo everywhere because they also realize that. Actually, a guy from Microsoft in, in, in Singapore uh, taught me that straight away. FOSS companies can uh, collaborate on products and sell to customers. How about a, a company that works in, in closed source? Yeah? Um, like, I think they must be constantly afraid. Can I talk to him about this? Or, yeah, I mean, I, I know some people, you go to events, not only free, not lost, and, and, and the people say, oh, well, I don't know, but I can't tell you about that. That's, you know, something new. Like, the, the most uh, um, extreme case we all know, it's Apple. Yeah? Like, where, where even, like, people, like, jumped out of the building in China or something for, 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 for some reasons because they had like so big problems like they re released a photo of the new iPad or something like that, yeah? Like, in, not imaginable, yeah? It's open source, it's free. We can actually work across companies. Proprietary models, often it's like that. They define a market. They say, okay, this market is $50 million. Or something like that. They, they, they make a research, they define the market. And then they say, okay, we have a market share of 60% or something like that, right? I mean, they, they always look at the market, they try to define the market share, they try to define like how it is. The experience that, I, that we have in open source is actually the more people use it and the higher the demand becomes. Um, I talked to uh, somebody from Snowflake, right? I mean, we, we, we saw that that in, in, in uh, uh, Switzerland and Germany, Title III is uh, very strong, yeah? And uh, the, the more uh, people see, okay, oh, here, that magazine or that newspaper or so on, they, they use Title III and it looks so cool and everything works, they, they think it's a good product. You don't need to explain in Germany, oh, listen, we have a solution here, it's based on Title III and so on. You say, oh, okay, Title III, yeah. Good, yeah, that's good, please go on. Yeah? Whereas in, in, in a country like maybe Japan or something, uh, you, you talk about this, um, and you say, oh, well, this open source thing, we don't know, yeah? but uh, can't you think about other solutions? So actually, the experience that I can see from, from years is that uh, the, the bigger, uh, um, uh, the more users you have, the more companies actually also buy your products, the bigger the market becomes. Yeah? It's, it's like that. So, um, yeah, the bigger the market. Okay, so these are a few uh, uh, key points uh, uh, up front. So now you're a company and you're thinking like, okay, so outsourcing all this talk and so on, why should I outsource, right? So I see a few reasons, um, direct business reasons, I call them, yeah? So, of course, the big reason always cost reduction. Everyone wants to reduce costs, right? You want to invest in new uh, markets and so on, this and that, and you want to increase uh, profit profitability, and so you want to reduce costs, right? But I think other points are becoming more and more important. Yeah? Um, for example, for us as a, as a company in Vietnam, this, this constant pressure also to us, right? Like discussion about ours and so on, it's, it's also a, a, a big pressure. Yeah? And, 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 and there's a big competition also about talents in Vietnam. So, um, so I would be happy, for example, personally, if uh, 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 our partners would understand actually it's, it's about the cost, okay, but you get access to talents. And the longer you work with these talents, the, uh, uh, the more opportunities you have, you, the, the, the better the development becomes, the, the longer we work together. It's, it's just like, uh, uh, like in your own company as well. Right? People start up and, and then uh, uh, you, you try to improve with them. So um, here we have some real good talents and, and, and you get access to them. And the other thing with uh, 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 free open source is uh, you, you grow the market, you increase the market by working together. These companies, for example, they use Typo 3 for your projects, maybe they might also sell a Typo 3 a website in future, uh, uh, for example, in Vietnam to a Vietnamese customer. So uh, uh, the bigger the community, the bigger the community, the bigger uh, uh, the the uh, usage in companies, and the, the more clients. Like it's growing. 
And the second part is um, you help to grow the ecosystem yeah, and support the community. I think this is very important um, in um, the free and open source uh, um, uh, companies and, and, and the people who, who, uh, who work in the companies. I mean, you, if you just want to make money, um, you could have become, I mean, you could have worked uh, uh, on the stock market or something like that, right? I mean, we want to do something cool, something interesting, and uh, we want to see something better. And we are happy also, like, if, if someone's uh, making a, um, like, if someone has a good life, you're happy, right? So, um, and uh, by improving the ecosystem and supporting the community, uh, you do good. Yeah? And you have, personally, you gain something. For example, you gain co-developers for your projects. Yeah? You improve your code base. And you foster the market. Okay, so there is a, another big difference here with uh, open source with, uh, that we can see with, with other uh, uh, um, sectors, industries. Okay, what, what have you seen outsourcing? We have seen outsourcing text, we've seen all kinds of outsourcing. But actually people lost their jobs, right? I, I haven't heard of a company that has lost jobs because they outsource some uh, uh, IT develop open source IT development. I don't know. Like uh, the companies that I see, they, they they actually just grow. They they don't even have enough developers. They just look for more talents. So I think nobody has ever lost their job because they uh, 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 outsourced open source development. So that's another cool thing. So who plans to outsource? It seems a lot of people. Yeah. Here is the research of um, the London School of Economics that I found, um, January 2012. Um, do you want to outsource in the next 18 months? 71% um, of over 1,000 uh, um, businesses that were asked here in this research said yes. So this is not just about uh, open source. This is like generally about uh, software. Um, outsourcing. Yeah. But maybe, uh, by the way, uh, that would be an interesting point if you have uh, people in your country who want to do um, a master or bachelor thesis, maybe to get real information about that, who actually wants outsource, they, they could get a study like this as a, <coughs> as a, a, a sample. So here we have uh, a lot of people who want to outsource, 71% said yes. But there are concerns. So. 39% of uh, companies here in this research say they aren't being convinced of the long-term business benefits. 30% say they aren't convinced of sufficient short-term cost savings. Right? And 37% uh, fear a disruption in business processes could limit their activities. Short-term cost savings, right? I mean, you get the you get the developer, for example, and and you get a good deal and so on. But don't forget, you always have overhead. You have communication overhead. You you have to explain your project and so on. It's very different to to meeting face to face. Yeah, cultural differences and so on. I will talk more about this in a moment. Concerns, for example, transition takes too long. Yeah, because you have your in-house team, and then you want to transfer tasks to the other team. Yeah? So that could take a long time. Um, processes aren't integrated. Yeah? The, 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 the other team that you get uh, uh, in the outsourcing partner maybe works very in a very different way. So there could be d business disruptions. Yeah? Because you, you don't want to tell your customers, oh listen, we just outsourced to Cambodia. Uh, in the next two months there might be some glitches, but uh, probably afterwards everything works well. Right? You, you don't want to say that. Yeah? You want the things to go on smoothly, and your clients uh, uh, they should have uh, uh, um, yeah they shouldn't have any issues with it. Lower service quality. Yeah, is the team the, uh, really able to do uh, uh, it in the same way that we have done it? There could also be question of treatment of uh, uh, of the uh, employees. Maybe not so much in the software sector though. 
okay, value delivery, it's related to this. Um, some even say, oh, well, you know, at the beginning, the cost of operation was even higher, right? Because we had to uh, somehow train the other team and, and, you know, we had to get them up to, to some level and, and, and we were late for the customer uh, and, and, and then actually it, it, it cost us more in the end. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I should switch that off. Confusion about what is being sold, right? I mean, everyone who works in business knows it's sometimes very hard to 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 define what you sell, what you buy, right? I mean, it's uh, already if you speak one language, right? I mean, do you want to write every detail in a contract? Like how how detailed you can make a contract? How how detailed uh, uh, I mean things? They you know like. Uh, um, so, you know, you have to reach an agreement often uh, by email, by this and that, over a very long distance. So, uh, yeah, that can lead to confusion. What do companies say who outsource already? 63% of medium-sized companies and 44% of large companies say outsourcing has been very effective in reducing costs. Okay, so overall, it seems to work. Some important points here for buyers, which means like the, the um, company from the West, for example, that outsourced. So financial stability, the, the track record, of course you want to see, have they done something similar before? Um, can they adapt to our uh, change and uh, uh, management, uh, to, can they adapt to our management and governance process? Scale, industry, specific knowledge, um, and culture is the most uh, it's, uh, uh, most critically important skills. So culture, right? I mean, think of that, for example, like uh, um, we had like small things. Sometimes it takes really time. Yeah. So uh, uh, you like if you have an application, for example, where you have currencies and dates and this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, actually the format, how, how dates are formatted all over the world and how currencies are written and even like it, it, it can, even in the English speaking world, it can depend on, on where, uh, where you are. Are you in Singapore? Are you in, in Britain? Are you working for a US customer? Yeah. Is it written in front? Is it written in back? Yeah. Uh, how you, how you uh, uh, define the, the interface? A lot of small things. Yeah? If you have somebody developing here in Vietnam, well, the developer has to look that up first. Yeah? So time adds up. So cultural knowledge is really uh, uh, important. So what many say, they are, therefore, at the beginning, they're only achieving modest business results uh, uh, beyond cost reduction. Yeah? So they're reducing the costs, but uh, uh, like there was something, oh, okay, we can have like, new talents and innovation and this and that, right? But the reality in many projects seems to be that uh, 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 cost reduction, yes, other improvements, difficult. Okay, so the challenges uh, that we have here. Many organizations take a fire and for forget approach to outsourcing. That's what uh, partners here say. So, uh, yeah, it seems like companies give the project, okay, you do it, yeah, do it in the way I need it, and, uh, uh, um, and that's it. Difficult for the party. So that's why we have this uh, next point here. Problems with outsourcing are as much the fault of the outsourcing organization as they are of the supplier. You need to manage that. Yeah? You can outsource everything um, except the management of the outsourcing relationship. Yeah? You need to engage. Yeah? You need to, 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 to make it smooth. Yeah? And at the beginning is a big effort. Another thing, outsourcing is not viewed by buyers or suppliers as a source of innovation, not seen as an agent of change, innovation, transformation, access to new technology. Yeah? And I think like if we look at that, right, I mean that research here that I'm quoting uh, was done like in the whole industry. But how about open source, right? Yeah, we, we guys are doing, we are doing uh, open source. So here we have access. So uh, they are complaining here about that point, but I think we have a real 
uh, uh, advantage over, over the traditional proprietary IT industry in that field. Yeah. Okay, another point, outsourcing is seen as your mess for less. So it means like uh, you, you, guys do, you guys do it, right? But uh, for, for less money and that's it. So innovation here, important point. Okay, I think I can skip the rest. So research shows that one third of all software um, develop best, most accurate and timely advice on the topic and meant projects started are never completed and over to communicate it actively so you can get through half of projects would exceed the budgets by 75%, right? Like, uh, uh, th that's another thing, yeah? We, we define a project, for example, in Vietnam, yeah? uh, but like sometimes there are small changes and then time adds up and, 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 and there can be complications, yeah? We we um, we talked about this. I don't know in, in some other talks that yeah something happens like something there are small problems or I don't know issues in the system and uh, the customer doesn't see it. The customer doesn't see that you actually work a, a week uh, uh, to 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 solve some uh, issues, right? So and I, I read uh, something similar a few months ago on on Heisedi, yeah that uh, actually just a few projects uh, only completed w within uh, uh, the set time frame and the set budget. Yeah? So think about this, keep this in mind when you actually start to work together with a uh, outsourcing partner. Yeah? So that can happen. Yeah? But if you manage it well, uh, you know it very early and you can see the process. You can influence things. So in-house or outsource, um, it's both not easy. Okay, so now we talk about like our oh, difficulties, this and that. So you're asking yourself, okay, so yeah, well, we're doing fine in Switzerland, it's okay, but uh, should we outsource yes or no and when to outsource? So, question of course here if you have a limited budget, if you have a lot of projects with limited budget, and um, that's what we have, for example, uh, uh, in, in our company. Um, we had uh, these kind of projects that they, okay, and mobile app, yeah, not too complicated actually. It's manageable, and uh, 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 but the customer uh, like the budget is too uh, low. Yeah, so the German company, our partner, wouldn't have done it. Yeah, but with <coughs> us together, they can do it. So uh, um, it's not about like uh, getting. Um, so they they wouldn't have gotten the the contract otherwise. They wouldn't have done it. Yeah? Or, as I talked before, about talents. Technical skills. You need people who are able. So you need more technical skills. That's another reason. Um, so you can't find enough good programmers. Hang on. Should, I do, so should I switch that off here? So more in, uh, uh, good programmers, and I, I, I think like I, I haven't met any company that says we have enough people. Okay, maybe in the closed proprietary area, but that's what I don't know, right? But the open source companies that I know from from Germany, um, you know, they always look for people. So what to outsource? Okay, what works well with outsourcing uh, traditionally? Simple production, right? That's what we see. That's why these sectors like uh, textiles and so on uh, moved abroad first. They, they could outsource uh, uh, simple tasks, yeah? Uh, um, like in, in Vietnam, for example, we see the, the Swiss Post, yeah? What, what, what are they doing? Uh, um, so this, in, in Switzerland, you, they scan all uh, the packages and the letters, yeah? And it's OCR, yeah, but everyone writes a bit different and sometimes there are errors. So in our city in Canton, we have 500 people who sit there at the computer 
And when somebody goes to the post in Switzerland, it's scanned, and the scan is immediately sent to Vietnam, and within 25 seconds, somebody sits in Vietnam and checks the address, if it's a real address that really exists in Switzerland. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? You can train people over a few weeks, and they can do it. The address comes, right? And then you have like different teams for French addresses, people who understand French, um, and uh, German, and, you know, Italian. So um, that works well. It's a simple, simple thing. Yeah? Um, but more complex, more complex tasks will, will uh, uh, also more difficult to manage. So what, what can you do, right? As open source company, for you it's much easier actually. Yeah? Open source. You can, you can already look in the community who's doing something, where are people doing something. Yeah? Look for partners, but keep in mind, if you have a complex project, it's also very complex to outsource it. Yeah? Okay, how to select an outsourcing partner then? Okay, so we have uh, here uh, three steps proposed in Software Without Borders. Once you source, you, you find an outsourcing partner you want to con uh, consider. So personal references are there, events, uh, you find them on the net, you see some projects that they did also, right? So that you are here, that's a great thing. You can actually see, uh, for example, what does Web Essential really do? Yeah, I, I heard that so many times. Of, of like, I, I know hardware people. Like, yeah, uh, you, you have you 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 have some people showing up in Europe. They tell you, oh, we have a factory with 200 people. Yeah, <coughs> and they show you pictures. They show everything, and it's with Chinese characters. You don't know if it's really the name. Um, or even like they hang up their poster there and, and, and you think, oh really, it's a factory, right? And you can even go to China and, 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 and they will show you around, yeah? But you really need to check. Is it really? Is it, is it, is it true? Is it really that company? Yeah? Go, like you have to hire a Chinese uh, uh, um, translator. Yeah? Same thing with, uh, with, with outsourcing, uh, with outsourcing software. Yeah. Try to go like like maybe you make holiday or already or you go to an event. Yeah. Um, already, if you meet somebody at an event, it's already pretty good. Yeah. If like somebody is at a type of three event from some company that's already really serious, they can show you websites so they really do something. Yeah. But you never know. They they tell you 50 people with 50 people. Yeah. Maybe they have 10. Yeah. You you, you never know. So you need to need to uh, understand, yeah? Okay, so, source. Second, screen. Write down what is important for you, yeah? You can't have everything. It's not for you. Cheaper, better, faster, yeah? Also contributing to other things, everything. It's not possible, yeah? We, we talked about this yesterday, right? So, Make a list, what is important for you. Check the technical abilities, um, ability to handle your size of projects. Yeah? Um, even smaller companies, if they, have, uh, the, um, if they have the cultural understanding, for example, um, they could even subcontract, right? For example, we had that question before, where we have a partner, um, uh, they have uh, 200 developers, and they manage them very well but they don't always have the cultural knowledge and, and like the working together. So actually, uh, it's also common in Europe that you make a consortia, yeah? that, you, that you work together. Like, yeah? You can tell your partners, it's okay. It's okay if you work with two other partners together, but you need to have the project lead. Yeah? Because like, these projects come like, where, where they actually need 200 developers. Yeah? We had that question, and, and then you say, oh, I only have 20 people, what to do? Yeah, they can make a consortia um, and check, like, uh, uh, for example, like um, here, an uh, uh, international company or a company in, in Vietnam is possible. So, your size of projects, talk to other clients, yeah? When, when you go to events, it's good, yeah? Sometimes they are also clients, you can talk to them. Visit the facilities, yeah? Screen the code and solutions. Again, an, a big advantage of uh, a free and open source. You can actually see the code. Hey, uh, I heard you're in the Type 3 community for, 
uh, several years, and I saw here and there, um, you said like you talked about some components, modules, what you do. Uh, which ones did you do? Right? Where is it? Where are they? Yeah? You can look at the code. It's good. Yeah? Also things like overlap time zones. Yeah? Here I find it quite difficult to work with the US together. Yeah, it's it's like right. It's the the, t uh, the U.S. is like uh, very much behind us, right? I mean, it's 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 a day like it's we we, we never have a, a daylight together. Yeah, very difficult. And you, I, I can't like ask the, the 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 staff to work at eleven in the evening. They're just tired. Yeah, or like phone calls at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's not sustainable. And a common cultural understanding. I mentioned that before. Okay, so point three then, next step, look in more detail at, uh, details at your finalists. So you have the list, uh, you, you talk to them, uh, look at the references, resumes, uh, rates. Um, you can also do a pilot project. You can also do a pilot project with uh, several companies. Yeah. Okay, then again, projects that relate uh, to, um, uh, projects related actually to the real life. I don't know that that Lebensrealität, yeah, a life reality. Can I say like that in English? Um, uh, of an application, real yeah. Life. Real life. Real life. Real life, yeah. Life, real, real life. It works. It works, yeah. <laughs> so, right. I mean, like uh, um, we worked on a on a quality assurance system for the Dutch Post, yeah. Um, there was like a, a, there was a map integrated, all kinds of things, and and then. Uh, um, so basically, like we, we check if the letters really li arrive. They are test letters, test people, uh, even old uh, uh, old grandmas. There were different gateways they could uh, call, right? And, and everything had to be integrated into the system. Yeah. Okay. So um, my developers understand different gateways. They understand email. They understand IMAP. They, un they understand like how to collect the number. They understand all that, but it's very hard for them to understand the whole thing. Like, the question was still, why do we need that? Well, well, why do they need that? Yeah? Right? I mean, legal sends out millions um, of their uh, um, printout uh, updates or something, uh, printout leaflet yeah? every month. They want to know if they really arrive. Right? And then they have to test people all over the country uh, who, who give feedback, okay, it really arrived. Right. That, that's what the system is for. There are many different ways to do it. But you know, like, uh, it, it's very far away. So it's a difficult project. It's a difficult project. Yeah? Because you have to explain every, everything every time. So then uh, another thing important, projects with a defined outcome. Yeah? And uh, uh, so try to understand these differences. Yeah? Try, uh, like uh, when you say, oh, Okay, why why you wrote the date wrong? Why is this wrong? Why is this wrong? Oh, don't they know, right? A German developer knows. You don't have to explain anything. Yeah, but here uh, uh, they might not. So if you have a cultural partner who is like foreigners inside, not really bad. And then think another thing. You needed a long time to 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 build up your competence, to to understand how everything works. You are in the community. You can go to Europe. Hack space or whatever, the, the people hang out, you can ask the questions very fast. Here, sometimes it takes a longer time. It's more difficult uh, uh, to meet up people and you don't always get an answer online. You hang out on IRC, um, it's at a very different time. Yeah. So your partner really needs to build up the competence of uh, the software developers. So actually, they are more programmers. Yeah? If you think of the difference programmers, developers, yeah? Uh, um, so, need time, and uh, over time, it's, it will get better. Yeah, and define projects as clearly as possible. Yeah. Well, I'm German. Yeah. Okay, I, I lived abroad quite a while, but like it's some stereotypes. I don't know. They're not entirely true, but like we are quite, quite on the spot sometimes, right? But we all. I did a project with a Japanese company. Wow. Yeah. Oh my, really, yeah, I mean, every detail, yeah, they, they defined, it, that was amazing, but it's not the worst thing, yeah. So, manage your projects actively. Um, okay, so short time, 
I had that similar task. Simple repetitive tasks um, and development ideas. So maybe give a bit simpler projects. Yeah? Maybe when a customer comes to you and you would say, oh no, that's out of our, that's not really what we do, uh, but the project quite simple, maybe take on the project, give it to your outsourcing partner yeah? at the beginning. Uh, um, so simple setup of uh, similar CMS installations, for example, yeah? A hotel system, right? They want a hotel system. We have five hotels, we want a hotel system. So um, it's always the same, different design, something like that, for example. Um, creation of templates, uh, design outlines. Um, yeah, here what GHP, it's not really software development, but you could like uh, think of it together, yeah? Also when you make, uh, for example, apps or applications, yeah? Uh, uh, um, it, it could make sense with an outsourcing partner together, yeah? Who, who, who works here, who maybe works on, on some uh, um, software development here and integrates people who, who type in something. There's an office with 100 people typing in. Think, yeah, like you can actually think of new uh, uh, um, business, uh, uh, businesses. Yeah? It's not just like taking something <coughs> that we do and bring it to uh, Cambodia. Yeah? Like with the, with the workforce that is available here at a, at a much lower rate, you can actually think of new things. Yeah? Like, uh, for example, there was this idea of, of, an, of an app. Uh, people scan like, like some outlines that they make, and they, they make the app, uh, uh, and then they actually have somebody here uh, in Vietnam who uh, uh, makes a presentation out of these drawings. Also, yeah? Or we had, uh, uh, in Japan, they, you can take a photo, and um, the photo then, uh, like with an app, yeah, um, and, and and then the photo will be sent uh, uh, to to a system, and actually, like uh, there, you just download a, a photo. There is a designer here, and they will will make a manga portrait of the photo. Yeah. So you can combine actually your your development, uh, uh, offer your clients completely new products. Yeah. So we have short term, and we have long term. So. Heavily customized systems and software applications, uh, uh, application development with Unix setups and features. So that should be better be done long term. Yeah. So w when you start a, uh, as a first project, oh, more difficult. So what works is if you assign someone in your company to check daily uh, on the daily and the weekly progress. Yeah. Don't just give it and okay. Yeah. We check in four weeks and and you guys do it. Yeah. You really need somebody in your company to, to check daily. It's quite tough, but later on, uh, you can see maybe you, you can reduce it. Yeah. Um, also, like I even know companies. Uh, uh, again, the Japanese. They make an interview with every developer. They they you right. They're different models also, like uh, uh, rate based models uh, or um, the model of. Uh, uh, Fixed price, yeah, project price, right? So, uh, um, yeah, you can think about that. Um, so the thing is, they, they hire a team, yeah? So there's a camera, microphone, and they really, like, uh, uh, talk to the team and they want to know if the people are able, and, you know, like, uh, some Japanese companies really, like, interview for an hour, yeah? But it's also an opportunity, because I know some companies have these interviews, and after that, the Japanese say, oh, wow, that team is great. I, I, I take three more of those. Yeah. So that's really good. Yeah. You know, in like what, what what I find difficult in Vietnam is to hire people who uh, not just they know some code, but people who actually can interact. Yeah. Who know what is IRC, how I can use IRC, how I use an issue tracker, yeah, uh, how I can communicate. Yeah? We don't need people who know everything, we need people who can find out everything. Yeah? The sector is it's moving so fast anyway, right? I mean, we had this, this talk of Kaspar like, uh, uh, with the fond memories of transparent GIFs. Yeah? Uh, that was like, you know, the, the design, right? I mean, things are moving fast. So the guys need to be able to constantly learn and interact with others. Yeah? Again, if you use a, a company that's actively involved in, open source, uh, in the open source community, you can be sure that they are able to communicate with you. Okay, so set up regular meetings, and especially with the project league. So we needed some time to figure that out. 
because like then I thought, okay, let's integrate everyone in the meeting so everyone learns and so on. So we had like we like big Skype talks and and so, but it's it's difficult, yeah. Like uh, uh, maybe better with the project lead, yeah, because also the uh, one of the customers would say, yeah, like Scrum like agile methods and uh, 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 we, we try to do that over the net. I don't know, like if you have. We do Scrum, scrum yeah. but we have uh, we have a very unscrum like. Status meeting, yeah. which is on the management level, on, yeah. on COO and project responsibility on the on the on the customer side. Yeah. So this is uh, on another level, which is completely non-technical. Yeah. It's completely on customer. Yeah, it's it's very it's difficult to 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 to, to 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 move these Scrum like agile methods to to the web and then interact and then communicate. That, that, yeah. That's usually so the, 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 the customer is directly with the, uh, with the developers. Yeah. Uh, but once a week there's a meeting okay. without the developers on yeah. the project. And, and I, the I, I don't know, well, you also pay you guys much more and they have uh, more experience. What I found, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's more difficult, uh, uh, like we only have the project lead discussing, sometimes the others are also in the chat, yeah. but they're, they, they're not talking. I want one person to be focused. Okay, so other things like, uh, uh, some are also obvious, plan with international holidays, uh, um, yeah, think about the design. We know that example of Nokia. They moved out of uh, uh, of Japan. Like for years, they tried to 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 get the interface right and so on. So uh, like, see what is really worse, right? Keep in uh, uh, mind that. Okay, we're getting to the end. Let, let's see if I have anything. Show me the code. Show me the money. I think that that that's a point I should I should mention uh, at the end. Um. <coughs> Price is rising. It's rising. You know? Like think more about talents than about the cost reduction too much. Yeah? Like the, the guys are leaving. Yeah. Even like uh, I was in Germany, all these startups there, uh, the guys tell me, oh, listen, you know, 8,000 euros. Right? And you know, it's like in the year 2000. Yeah? We have a lot of startups, they all look for people. Yeah? Okay, so it's, it's still cheaper here, but uh, right? I mean, like within a you know, three to four years, the the the, the rates of uh, it, it could double for somebody who's able. Yeah. After a while, you see some people can't progress, but like the, the able people that we need, uh, the the it, it could double. And then we have companies like HP, IBM, or some yeah, like SAP moving in, saying, okay, we need now five thousand, five thousand even, but a few hundred HP. Yeah. Five thousand. Yeah. Any five right? And and suddenly like a, a Swiss Post here. From Schoenberg said, yeah, I, I don't know, they, they, I can't find people suddenly, right? And then after a while, uh, HP realizes, oh, actually, they all have a degree, but not everyone is, is, is able. <laughs> then, then, then they, you know, the market of developers relaxes a bit, right? But they also make these promises, right? They come to Vietnam and say, okay, listen, I pay you 30% more if you come to me. Yeah, okay. Yeah? So the loyalty, yeah? So that's, but actually, think about uh, free and open source again. Right? The people we have in the company, for example, they love free and open source, right? They don't always have the best degrees. I don't trust uh, this kind of best degree thing, yeah? We don't know if the parents paid or not, yeah? yeah. So, um, so I have the people, I find them on, right, where, where, where did we, uh, where were you on the Fedora mailing list or something? Yeah? Or, so, uh, or you posted uh, on the web about Fedora and so on? Right? That, that's how we found home, yeah? And uh, so he likes it, he likes what he do, right? And, and now he's doing Linux development. So uh, um, right, I, I didn't have to say, okay, hey, listen, you can earn so much money, right? He has to earn money anyways, and we have to pay, and in the future we have to pay more. Yes, but as we are free and open source, we have the, uh, uh, we have the advantage that the people that we're looking for are also in the, in the area, yeah? But don't forget, you need to pay more in future, especially like people become better. So good people, good language skills. I uh, here I wrote that with IBM, HP, and so on. Okay, at the end, this one also think about the uh, um, uh, intellectual property rights. Personally, I don't know if it really exists, um, but it's not really relevant for free and open source. Might be relevant for maybe like. Usually projects are not 100% open source or 100% closed source, right? There's design there, there are uh, models and so on, but it's, uh, it's one uh, agreement here. Assignment of copyright, yeah? 
also can be important in the free and open source. Maybe you want to multi-license everything if you don't have the uh, uh, copyright, right? But th that thing you need to check yourself because the situation is different in US and Europe, right? In, in, Euro in US you actually can assign the copyright to somebody else. In Europe it's not always possible. Non-disclosure obligations, yeah? Also relevant for uh, uh, open source projects, yeah? Can, can work depending on customer. Okay, then you have uh, other ones, um, but uh, um, generally I can say you can also make a lot of agreements, but it's quite difficult to, I mean, how, how do you, in, in case you don't agree with somebody, how do you want to sue them here? Yeah. So, better work with really like international company. Okay, there is more. Um, if you want, you can talk to me directly. I can uh, send you some links to uh, slide share uh, um, to some, some talks that we heard in the future, uh, in the past, right? I think maybe we could make a list of a few talks like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> mean? Uh, because I know that uh, you also had some events, like uh, if you're interested more in the, in the subject, actually from people on the ground here in Vietnam and in Cambodia. And uh, yeah, I would like to say thank you in Vietnamese, come on, yeah? And uh, I would like to invite you uh, uh, in spring 2012 to, uh, to Vietnam. We are organizing FOSS Asia. Um, here you see uh, the group of volunteers that we have. We also have a lot of volunteers. Yeah, They love to meet uh, foreigners. The English level is not always like here in Cambodia, but we also uh, have a lot of people who will support you. So please uh, join us. And uh, if you have any questions, then um, yeah, come to me. Ah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm always uh, behind, right? So let's let's change that, okay? You can also join me in spring 2013. Yeah, always the, 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 the dates always change, right? They keep changing. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> spring 2013, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Here's uh, Chris, uh, can I add something? Hi. Um, yeah, I want to add something because I'm also working in outsourcing business, not only in uh, open source. So we are doing also .NET development, which is completely not open source, <laughs> and uh, SharePoint, but it's good cash cow. <laughs> but um, when you said when to outsource, I think you missed the point also to flex to make your cost structure more flexible, not only to reduce your 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 cost. Because these people you hire from an outsourcing provider, you don't hire them like you hire people in your home country. So you don't hire them like with a six month termination agreement. Um, if your, I don't know, if your sales decline, for example, and you need to fire people, it's much more harder to fire them. And you usually have a, a, a I don't know how it's, how it's uh, with MBM, but um, you usually have when you make on, a, on an hourly basis, on a service contract basis, um, you have an all-inclusive cost, so you don't pay up to the to your hourly rate. Also, the insurance fee, taxes, um, unemployment insurance, social something. Shoot me, please. I don't know, but I, <laughs> but um, you don't pay this on top of this, so you have a much more flexible and easier also to cancel these costs in case your sales decline, and it's also easier also to scale up, which is. I think what is uh, missing there. I also want to add something because I think we are working a little bit different because we are working on the uh, with Scrum Agile, as I explained also a little bit during my presentation yesterday. And um, I think it's not. He said it right. In in some part, you need to um, have very clear definition of the tasks, but you don't need them always in the beginning. You don't need to make everything defined in the beginning. Often is it's exactly like he said, it's um, you're afraid, you're outsourcing. Uh, um, yeah, but um, I want to make sure I get what I need. So I'm, um, I'm really writing every single task into the contract so um, I can later sue you in case um, you don't deliver. And this is the completely wrong idea because there is actually no trust. So don't outsource. If you don't have trust <laughs> and you have not the ability to communicate during the uh, during the um, cooperation, 
then outsourcing is not a solution for you. Yeah. Um, you need to communicate, and I wanted to add something to that which I forgot, but <laughs> but it's um, yeah. It's also like this. If you do it like this and you define all the tasks, you may get all these tasks done. But it doesn't mean that's the, that this is the software you need. This is just the software which you um, specified. <laughs> but maybe six months or in bigger projects like a year later, the market has completely changed. The, the situation is different. You have test versions and you see some things are not working, uh, like a newsletter system, you implemented a newsletter system, but then you feel that nobody is using newsletters anyway. Uh, but, so don't develop it if you don't need it. So the software you need is not the software which you specified a year ago. <laughs> this is also something. So what we do, for example, when we make like this long-term project, we don't write anything technical into our contract. There's nothing technical. It's uh, about the cooperation to work together, and everything technical is discussed after the kickoff meeting. Yeah, some, some yeah. yeah I, I think it always depends like what specifically you outsource of course yeah. what way you outsource and where you are at your outsourcing relationship yeah right so if uh, uh, right and like for example I think you guys really uh, um, you also sell directly to clients through your right yeah, yeah. yeah. so so you you don't only uh, uh, it's not just that people uh, hire a developer with you, as far as I understood, like you actually have people selling in Switzerland uh, uh, um, solutions, yeah? No, no, not solutions. Not solutions. No, no, no we, are, we are actually working for, um, we are mostly um, offering. We are mostly offering a dedicated developers. So um, they are actually, instead of hiring people which are a little bit more expensive in Switzerland or in Germany and have also the, the fixed price and not the flexible costs. Um, Instead of doing that, they hire the developers with us. This is actually our core activities. activities. But we also have project work um, or also, of course, pilot projects, which is actually a very good idea to do. Pilot projects, look at the code, <laughs> um, and also talk to uh, former customers or existing customers, which is even better. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Do we actually have a, a uh, microphone? Sorry, time is up now. Yeah, is there another talk afterwards? Yes. Ah, okay, I thought it was the last one. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just important to recognize that there is risk sharing that takes place between the customer and the supplier. But I'd be curious to actually hear from maybe like from Hanta and Boris and maybe, um, yeah, others in the room. From your perspective, you're the customer. You know, for an outsourcing provider, what are ways that assure you? I guess if you've never worked with an outsourcing partner before, then what are ways that we can help mitigate the risk for you and kind of create some more of that trust up front? So I mean, yesterday Chris talked about this idea of key performance indicators and being really transparent with um, you know your, an opportunity for customers to very quickly tell us you know what are things that are not going well. But are there other things that you would, would like to see from your outsourcing providers that would create and help establish that trust up front? Now we ask you the questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Payback time. <laughs> yes, um, as I'm outsourcing uh, the essentials, um, I think what you said about trust and, uh, well, not going too much into very single detail is well actually for me an important part because your outsourcing partner should be like a team member yeah as as you hire someone who needs to learn your workflow you need to learn their workflow actually that's the reason why i'm here uh to see you face to face um not just on skype or pay, uh, via email so i think that's an important part to trust and getting to know someone because um Working with someone is not just about his skills, it's about, well, if you like him or not. If you don't like someone, you can't work as efficient with someone else. And that's a main rule for co-workers as for outsourcing partners. So that's an important part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 
Yes, I just have one small comment. I, I think I see a very interesting, I uh, make a very interesting observation that actually for people who have started outsourcing to us, that they have become more organized in the way they do certain <laughs> things themselves. And I think that can be also a very big chance, um, especially if you've been used to do things in certain ways, but you want to um, yeah, be prepared for scaling your business, or if you want to, um, because the economy is maybe a little bit uncertain, to, yeah, to position yourself differently. I think it's a very good chance also to use outsourcing to um, have someone from the outside who is actually a partner and who is actually giving you some feedback in yeah, how you communicate and how... Um, because we have like lots of experiences already with different um, clients we have worked with. And so I think it's also good, uh, we can be a good resource also for this also to feed back. So I really like the, the, the partnership model. I like what you said, Mario, in terms of um, open source, obviously. Yeah, it's a very interesting thought. And that is so transparent. Yeah. OK, so um, I think we have the chance to talk to each other more um, anyway. So um, yeah, and we're talking all the time. So thanks for uh, sharing everything and um, uh, yeah, have a good day.